Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about macromolecules. There are four major macromolecules in the body. You might hear them referred to as the building blocks of life. And this is because everything in the body is made up of different combinations of these molecules. For example, your muscles are mostly made up of protein, but they have a little bit of lipids and carbohydrates in them as well. Each macromolecule has its own special structure and function. Their individual structure determines how they behave in the body. If you look at the name, it starts with macro, which means big. Macromolecules are big molecules, but they are actually made up of lots and lots of smaller subunits. These subunits can be called monomers. This makes sense because mono means one. Each type of macromolecule has its own type of subunit. You can add a bunch of subunits together to make a larger structure. And when you have several subunits together, you have a polymer. Now, poly means several or many. If you have lots and lots and lots and lots of subunits, you have made a macromolecule. So a macromolecule is just a big structure made up of lots and lots of repeating little subunits or monomers. We put together and take apart macromolecules all the time. In fact, when you digest your food, you are breaking down large macromolecules into smaller monomers that can be absorbed by the digestive system. When we grow or build muscles, we're doing the opposite. We're adding monomers together to create a larger structure. We want to make sure we are holding the monomers together with something strong enough to last, but not so strong they can never be taken apart. And we use covalent bonds for this. When we make bonds, the electrons are shared between the two atoms, and there is energy stored in those bonds. We will talk more about that in the catabolism and anabolism video coming up later. For now, let's start with my personal favorite macromolecule, carbohydrates. This is what you think of when you think sugars or starches. Bread, pasta, candy, potato chips, they're all full of carbohydrates. These macromolecules are useful for quick energy because we can break them down into simple sugars like glucose. When we break apart the atoms, we release the energy that was stored in the bond. The monomer of a carbohydrate is a monosaccharide. We like to talk about glucose a lot in this class. It is a monosaccharide, looks like this, but there are several different types of monosaccharides. For example, fructose, which is the sugar, the type of sugar you find in fruit. Two monosaccharides linked together gives you something called a disaccharide, di meaning two. Some famous disaccharides are lactose, which is the sugar found in milk, and sucrose, which is table sugar. Notice that all of these simple sugars end in ose. Carbohydrates are made up of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Notice something familiar on this structure. We can see an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen, and we know what this means. Because the oxygen is more electronegative, the electrons shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen will be more attracted to the oxygen and less attracted to the hydrogen. These electrons are unequally shared, making this a polar covalent bond. In fact, there are five different OH groups on this monosaccharide. This will affect how this monomer acts out in the world. Anytime you have a polar covalent bond, there's a slight negative charge on one side of the bond because of all the electrons wanting to be on that side more. Those charges are very happy to snuggle up next to water. Remember that water also has different charges on different sides of the molecule. So the slight negative charge on oxygen is going to want to snuggle up next to the slight positive charge on hydrogen. This monomer is very comfortable in a polar environment like water, which makes monosaccharides and the carbohydrates they make up hydrophilic or water loving. Let's talk about proteins next. Proteins are important in the body because enzymes are primarily made of proteins, and enzymes are the catalysts that get reactions done in the body. Our muscles are also mostly made up of protein. The monomer of proteins is amino acids. There are 20 possible amino acids, and each amino acid has a specific layout. It is composed of carbons, 
hydrogens, two oxygens, and a nitrogen. Remember that carbohydrates didn't contain nitrogen. The R group is different between the 20 different amino acids. Now look at the atoms on the right side. There is an oxygen bound to a hydrogen. We know that oxygen is very electronegative, which means the electrons want to be near it more than they want to be near the hydrogen. So the electrons in this bond are not equally shared. This is another example of a polar covalent bond. But look at the other end of this amino acid. There is a nitrogen and it also is very electronegative. And it's also sharing electrons with a hydrogen atom. This is a second situation where there is unequal sharing of electrons, making a polar covalent bond over here as well. Both ends of this molecule are able to make hydrogen bonds with other molecules. And all of these polar bonds make amino acids very comfortable with other polar substances, like water. So we say that amino acids and the proteins that they make are also in the hydrophilic club. In fact, proteins have so many ways to interact with other molecules because of their polar covalent bonds, they even interact with other amino acids in the same chain. You can see our original amino acid here. And if another amino acid is nearby, they may form a hydrogen bond with one another. Hydrogen bonds are usually denoted by a dotted line which represents that it's not an actual bond where electrons are being shared or donated and received. It's more like a transient attraction between oppositely charged ends of molecules. Because of these hydrogen bonds and other interactions, proteins tend to fold up. We can name these levels of structure or folding in proteins. The first level is called the primary structure. Think of the amino acids as being beads on a string. The primary structure is just the order of amino acids on that string. Remember that there are 20 amino acids, so which order they go in is the primary structure. Secondary structure is when small areas of that long string of amino acids fold up because of the hydrogen bonds we just talked about. You can see that the hydrogen bonds between the oxygen of one amino acid and the hydrogen on a different amino acid are attracted to one another. Here we have another dotted line showing that there's a hydrogen bond between them. This twists the chain up into little areas of folding. What you can see on the left is an alpha helix structure and it looks kind of like an old time phone cord. The other way on the right is called a beta pleated sheet and it looks kind of like a pleated paper fan. Both of these are called secondary structure of the protein chain and it happens in small areas of the chain, not the whole thing. Remember that these chains can be thousands of amino acids long. We're just looking at maybe five or six of them here. These hydrogen bonds are what get broken when you denature a protein by heating it up exposing it to chemicals or extreme pH. When this happens, the hydrogen bonds are broken and the protein loses this type of structure. Tertiary structure is when all of the smaller interactions add up and the whole chain gets folded into a three-dimensional structure. This structure is really important. The protein won't work properly if it doesn't have the correct tertiary structure. The last level of structure is when two or more protein chains come together and work as one. Not all proteins have quaternary structure. Some proteins exist as a single peptide chain. You may have noticed that when something is polar, it is also hydrophilic. Another thing that is hydrophilic are ions, charged particles. So try to keep these three characteristics in mind as they go together. That's it for carbs and proteins. Come back for the next video on our last two macromolecules, nucleic acids and lipids. See you in class.